What's going on? Stoop Kid's afraid to leave his stoop. Stoop Kid's afraid to leave his stoop? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things only adults notice in Hey Arnold. You're very creative. Did you say used gum? For this list, we'll be looking at themes and references from this Nickelodeon show that you might have to be a little older to understand, unless you're a sophisticated child like Arnold. Which moments made you say, hey, I get that now? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Addiction. Chocolate. Chocolate. Two days without chocolate. Since first surfacing in 1968, the term chocoholic has been written off by many as a joke. However, there is an addictive nature to the tasty sweet. Chocolate Boy is proof in the pudding. That's a punch neck? Where, where? Relax, Chocolate Boy. It was a couple of days ago. And you don't go back that fast. Where is in the trash? <laughs> that kid's got problems. Often seen with a brown ring around his mouth, raggedy clothes, and unhinged eyes, Chocolate Boy is like bubbles from the wire if you crossed him with Sunny from Cocoa Puffs. After several appearances, Chocolate Boy is motivated to kick his addiction with some help from Arnold. It turns out that his habit is largely rooted in psychology. He eats chocolate to fill the void left by his nanny, who moved to Delaware. She said goodbye, be good and be happy. Then she left. And then I went up to my room and ate chocolate. A lot of chocolate. Addressing his abandonment issues, Chocolate Boy gets clean, although he trades one addictive substance for another, radishes. Number 9. Orson Welles' War of the Worlds In this Halloween special, Arnold and Gerald trick the neighborhood into thinking that aliens are real, which catches the attention of a TV host named Douglas Kane. What? Oh, quiet, everybody. Something's going on. I repeat, we have reports of an alien spacecraft landing on the outskirts of the city. Kids might think something like this could never happen in real life. That's because they weren't alive on Halloween 1938, when Orson Welles performed a radio broadcast of H.G. Welles' The War of the Worlds. Welles' broadcast was so effective that many believed aliens were actually invading, unintentionally igniting a panic. This is a joke, right? Douglas Kane, whose surname could be a nod to Welles' Citizen Kane, is voiced by Maurice LaMarche. In addition to voicing Big Bob, LaMarche has imitated Welles on numerous occasions. This being one of the most meta examples that younger viewers likely missed. Radio transmissions were picked up tonight in the east side neighborhood below Wells Ridge, reporting that aliens have landed. I knew it! Number 8. Helga stalking Arnold. The girl who's constantly lurking in the shadows spying on you. The girl who's forever stalking you and following you home. Standing here on your stoop, ready to confess unto you my most hallowed of secrets. One of the show's best running gags involves Helga pretending to hate Arnold to disguise the truth that she loves him. Maybe to a creepy extent. Helga keeps a shrine to Arnold in the back of her closet, as well as a diary where she writes about how he awakens her girlhood. Arnold, you make my girlhood tremble. My senses all go wacky. Someday, I'll tell the world my love. On more than one occasion, Helga has broken into Arnold's boarding house, sometimes seeing more than she should have. To be fair, there's a part of us that secretly relates to Helga. And even if he doesn't realize it at first, Arnold reciprocates her feelings. Still, if any adult found out that somebody was collecting their used gum, they probably wouldn't find it delightfully quirky. They'd call the cops, and it wouldn't be unwarranted. I knew you couldn't fight your true feelings for me. <sighs> Number 7. Woodstock Grandpa Phil has lived a long, colorful life, some of which can't be shown on a kid's network. When Arnold learns that his grandpa never finished grade school, he encourages him to go back and get his diploma. I never finished the fourth grade. Never finished the fourth grade? Grandpa hesitates, claiming that he lost most of his brain cells at Woodstock. You're not too old, Grandpa, and you've still got plenty of brain cells. No, not since Woodstock. You kids might think he's talking about Snoopy's bird pal, but adults will be familiar with the 1969 rock festival that Grandpa is referring to. They'll also realize that Grandpa didn't lose his brain cells due to loud music. It's safe to say that Grandpa had some psychedelic hobbies back in the day. Grandpa takes Arnold's advice, 
although he lets youth go to his head, leading to an awkward date with two underage girls. Grandpa, where are you going? We're gonna sneak into a PG-13 movie. But you're 81. Number six, isolation. Opening up to Arnold, Pigeon Man, whose real name is Vincent, reveals that he used to have friends. Friends thought I was weird, so they stopped talking to me. It's hard for me to trust people, Arnold. As Vincent developed an interest in birds, others grew distant, and he cooped himself up. While Arnold partially restores his faith in humanity, Pigeon Man still feels out of place in this cruel world, leading to a bittersweet send-off. As kids, we could identify with Vincent's loneliness. As adults, his isolation hits us on another level. Some people are meant to be with people, and others, like me, are just different. Pigeon Man can represent a wide range of people who've been ostracized by society. The episode doesn't leave us with an easy answer, as intolerant people don't change overnight. If we can learn to listen like Arnold, though, perhaps outcasts like Pigeon Man won't feel the need to hide anymore. I just hope there's another Arnold where I go next. Number 5. Agoraphobia. Stoop Kid's afraid to leave his stoop. It's a chant that any 90s kid will recognize, and it's continued to endure through meme culture. Stoop kid scared to leave his stoop. I'm spreading the word. As a kid, the idea of a person being afraid to vacate their home might have sounded silly. As an adult, you suddenly realize that Stoop Kid is suffering from a very real anxiety disorder, agoraphobia. Maybe if you tried to leave the stoop, people wouldn't make fun of you. No, I can't. What if I tried to help you? It'd just be a waste of time! In addition to those who fear leaving their residence, this mental health condition can apply to people who feel uneasy in crowded areas and open spaces, igniting panic attacks. As Stoop Kid exemplifies, what seems like a small step to some can be a perilous journey for him. Arnold is the only one who takes Stoop Kid's condition seriously, helping him overcome his social phobia. Number four, war references. They hold that big Veterans Day celebration every year in the Capitol, but around here you wouldn't even know it was anything but a free day off work. How did you first learn about World War II and Vietnam? Maybe in history class or from a relative? You also might have seen this episode, which goes to places we honestly never expected to see from Nickelodeon. How many times have Nazis been depicted in Nicktoons before or since? They were mean, they were mean, but most of all, they were hungry. Granted, the swastikas are replaced with frowny faces. Nickelodeon apparently had to draw the line somewhere, but they did sign off on Grandpa beating up Hitler. While Grandpa embellishes that part, Arnold finds that many of his war stories are true. Gerald also learns that just because his father didn't see much combat during Vietnam doesn't mean he didn't play an integral role. For all the jokes, the episode ultimately highlights the heroism of veterans. This is the man I told you about, Martin Johansson the man who saved my life. It's an honor, sir. Number three, being a refugee. This episode also explores Vietnam, but in a subtler way. Arnold learns that Mr. Nguyen had a daughter during the war. This type of year always make me remember. To guarantee her safety, Mr. Nguyen entrusted his daughter to a U.S. soldier. Upon coming to America as a refugee, Mr. Wynn struggled to find her. Sometimes it is so difficult. I almost give up hope. But I never stop thinking about her. I will never stop trying. Like Mr. Wynn, voice actor Bowen Coleman is a Vietnamese refugee. Given his experience, Coleman worked closely with the showrunners to make the episode more authentic without directly mentioning the specific war. This topic proved so heavy-handed that Nickelodeon considered pulling the episode. After an executive showed her son an animatic, he asked, Mom, is that what Vietnam was all about? This convinced the executive to approve the episode, granting us a Christmas classic with a happy ending. Everyone, this is my, my daughter. Hello, everyone. Number two, child neglect. We didn't have therapy when I was a kid. <laughs> That's obvious. If you ever wondered why Helga acts out, look no further than her family. Her father is an egomaniac who can't remember her name, her mother is clearly blending her smoothies with something intoxicating, 
and her sister is an overachiever who casts a wide shadow over her younger sibling. Hey, who's taking me to play school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. in a minute, Olga. No, I'm Helga, Dad. Helga. Whatever. Go play outside, would you? This episode provides a deep dive into Helga's psychology, exploring how a nine-year-old girl can be far more complex than some might assume. Chances are, we all grew up around somebody like Helga, who we assumed was just born antagonistic. In reality, a lack of attention at home might have been the root of their actions. Your mom doesn't notice you? My mom? <laughs> My mom wouldn't notice me if I was an alien pod person chanting Hare Krishna and spitting nickels. You may need to be older to fully grasp Helga's therapy session, but kids will walk away with more empathy. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Try My Sausage. This background artist knew what they were doing. You sure you don't want some? No, thanks. Grandpa says all I can have is water till the contest begins. <gasps> Reach? Pull. We knew Ernie was lonely, but we didn't need that image. Still doing that exercise I taught you? Yep. Reach, reach pull, pull, reach, reach pull. pull. <laughs> Good boy. Do that every day, and when the big moment comes, you'll be ready. Pet the kitty. We can see why Oscar is drawn to this book. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Do you want to pet the kitty? Yes, I want to pet the kitty. Pet, pet, pet. Miss Felter. Even her name is a tease. Arnold, 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 Arnold. Huh? Nantucket. So how does that poem end? I thought we would take up where you left off on your poetry lesson. Uh, I know a poem! There once was a man from Nantucket. That's fine. Have a seat. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Abandonment Bye, Mommy. Bye, Daddy. Arnold is often drawn to people who have been separated from their loved ones, such as Mr. Wynn, and those who've been neglected, like Helga. We come to understand Arnold's motivations upon finding out why he's being raised by his grandparents. Unlike some absent parents, Arnold's mom and dad left for noble reasons, with the intention of returning. Having mysteriously disappeared, though, it's hard for Arnold not to feel abandoned. I'm just fed up, Grandpa. I don't want to think about my parents anymore. I'm sick of hoping that they'll come back someday. Although there is a void, Arnold takes comfort in knowing that his grandparents have always been there for him. Arnold does reconnect with his parents through a journal, leading to a touching reunion 15 years later. Ironically, by that point, the kids who grew up with the show were mature enough to appreciate Arnold's nuances. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.